I got this clock at a thrift store a while back, but was unsure of what to do with it. Eventually, I decided to take some inspiration from this clock in Animal Crossing, so let's get into it. First, to form the teeth. I figured I'd make use of some scraps I've been hoarding, I mean, saving, and just cut away at them, eyeballing it as I go until I get the right size and shape that I want. Once I had the top row all sorted out, I did the same for the bottom. Then I put a marking in the middle of each tooth to be a guide and help keep track of which side faced outward. After that, I used scissors to round out the edges of the teeth. and sanded it with my Dremel to smooth it out. I repeated this until all the teeth were rounded. For the next part, we want to move the teeth over to a plastic sheet. We'll be giving them a good coating of Mod Podge so they won't be so squishy.
After they've had time to dry, we can super glue them in place. While those are drying, I'm brushing some talcum powder onto the silicone mold to make it easier to remove the clay. Once that's done, we can roll out the clay and press it firmly into the mold. Then carefully remove it. And repeat the same for the other one. After that, I cut off a small portion of the bottom in a straight line. Then I go ahead and cut off the excess clay. Now we're going to place them on top of the clock. And we'll be gluing them down with some E6000.
After letting that dry for a few hours, we want to remove these boring round things on the bottom. If it helps, we can just imagine that they're the heads of corrupt politicians that want to take away your rights, or a billionaire that ruined your favorite social media platform, and just yank that little bugger right off. These other ones seem to be stuck on with paint, so we'll need to apply a blade. In this case, a knife. The name of the game here is Slow, Careful Decapitation. And that seems to have done the trick with this one, but the other two are going to prove to be a bit more stubborn. They really don't want to come off. So we're bringing out the clamp. And after enough persuasion, it finally gives up the ghost. As does the other one. And to replace them I got these little plastic skull buckets from Dollar Tree. But as I was testing out the placement, I noticed a problem. With the skulls, the clock wants to fall backwards, so let's fix that. First I'm going to get rid of these handles, they're only in the way. Then I'm going to poke a hole through the back and widen it with the knife. I'll get to the reason for this in a bit. Now with the skull sitting flat on some plastic, we want to start building up a mound of hot glue at the back of the skull, making sure to let it cool between each layer. Once we've built up the mound enough, we're going to pour a generous amount of hot glue on the hole we made from the inside so that some of it seeps through. This will give the glue on the outside a more substantial anchor point to hold on to, and we'll continue to build up the glue on the outside. After giving it some time to cool down, we can peel them off the plastic sheet.
Now we can turn it and fill the gaps a bit better. Is it an elegant solution? No. But I like to imagine the glue mounds are just their brains leaking out. And it seems to have fixed the falling problem, so I'll call it a win. Now to get them adjusted into place, and we can glue them with our E6000. A few hours of drying time later, and we can start covering up the parts we want to protect. With those parts covered, we can give the whole thing a coat of Mod Podge to seal the cracks and provide a better painting surface to some of the materials. After letting the Mod Podge dry, it's time to go outside and spray paint it black. And once again, wait for it to dry before dry brushing some gray paint onto it to help highlight the details.
Now we're going to take a little bit of red paint and dry brush it onto the tips of the teeth. Let's go ahead and remove the covering on the front of the clock. It's looking pretty good, but I want to take it just a bit further. Using a little water, we're going to make some red paint wash. and have it drip down from the teeth. Once the water dries, the effect should be more subtle. I also want to give the clock itself a slightly redder tint. This will also be more subtle once dry. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe as it helps the channel out greatly. And a big thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping support me and my projects. Patreon supporters get early access to videos, artwork, and various bonus content, like extended rough cuts of videos like this one. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you my creepy comrades in another video.